Olá pessoal, bem-vindos aqui a Marty Secrets Podcast e também aqui no nosso canal do YouTube. Hoje temos um convidado, é um convidado especial, ele vem da Dinamarca, já foi tentor de três recordes do mundo, acho que neste momento está tentor de dois recordes do mundo, vocês já vão perceber e depois vamos aplicar algumas das coisas que ele faz dentro do nosso mundo do empreendedorismo e vermos como é que nós podemos respirar melhor. É uma coisa que queremos falar ao longo deste podcast. Eu aviso que vai ser em inglês, ok? Vai ser em inglês, mas se não entenderes, é conceito a ver então no YouTube, se estiver já no YouTube, e ligares as legendas para poderes ver a tradução, ok? A tradução do YouTube não é perfeita, mas é o melhor que se pode. Todos os dias o empreendedor tem de efetuar Três vendas. A venda a si mesmo, a venda à sua equipa e a venda ao cliente. Para que isto aconteça com a maior eficácia possível, precisamos de algo muito forte. Marketing. Marketing é a única resposta possível para fazer crescer pequenas empresas que não têm o um músculo financeiro para enfrentar os tubarões do mercado. Por isso, a pergunta é, como é que podemos ter um marketing que seja poderoso e ao mesmo tempo não esvazie os nossos bolsos? O meu nome é Ricardo Teixeira, sou empreendedor há mais de duas décadas e um apaixonado por marketing. Todas as semanas procurei partilhar estratégias e táticas de marketing que procurem responder a esta pergunta. Bem-vindo ao KI Marketing Secrets. Vamos ao nosso convidado, Steve. How are you, man? Hello, muito bom. <laughs> from Dubai, from Dubai. Cool. Home, so, home. Yeah, it's good. First of all, first of all, let, let, uh, introduce yourself like in one minute. Introduce yourself to the audience. Who are you? Where do you come from? And what do you do? My name is Dick Severinsen. I'm the founder of uh, on, an online uh, uh, breath and health platform called Breathology or Breathology.com. I do come from Denmark, Danimarca, Dinamarca. Yeah. Uh, Farlo Portignol. I speak this half Spanish, half <laughs> Portuguese. I was at the Olympics in Rio in 16 and I've been to a few carnivals. I love Rio and Brazil, but I was with Ricardo, my good friend here and other people in Portugal this year in September. So, uh, sorry, last year in September. So only about four months ago, I was actually for a month in beautiful Lisboa and a bit up north. So. Um, I love nature, I love water, I love swimming, I love surfing, and that's what I'm all about. So I have a biology degree, marine biology, I have a PhD in medicine. So I'm curious about the mind and the body and how to optimize everything with health and performance. That's um, awesome. And, and, and I love free diving. I love free diving. So, you know, yeah. holding my breath is a big passion. That's what I'm what I want to aim for, because yeah. you already uh, you already had like three world records. Uh, I think 12, but that, that 12. doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think what you're meaning to say is that I was a four times free diving world champion. I think that's what you think. Yeah. Yeah. I won the gold medal four times at the world championship. And then I, I have about 10 or 12 world records. And the latest have been the Guinness world record that I did in Mexico. I call it the 2020 dive because it was 202.0 meters. So ending 2020 on a positive note to talk about the dreams you can reach about not stopping because of COVID, not putting your life on hold. And I did that in La Paz in beautiful uh, Mexico. Uh, and it was a long distance, the longest distance ever swam underwater in open ocean. Wow. So I'm, I'm curious, what comes to your mind when you are going through those world records? Because people don't know, but you had the world Guinness record of uh, holding your breath um, for 22 minutes. That's uh, right. <laughs> when I when I say to people 22 minutes, they go like, what? Yeah. <laughs> they, they think it was a mistake, you know, lost in yeah. translation or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was the first to pass the 20 minutes. Maybe I'm more proud about that one. Then I did 21 minutes on History Channel with Stan Lee, you know, the the superhumans and all this. And then I did 22 minutes, as you correctly say, on, on uh, Discovery Channel. I was crowned the ultimate superhuman by the Discovery Channel. But I was the first to pass 20 minutes and I did that in 2010. I did 20 minutes 10. So like I did 2020, now 10 years later in the in the meters, I did 20 minutes 10 seconds in 2010 on April 1st in a shark tank to make it fun. So I tried shark to make tank. My, in a shark <laughs> tank, a big shark tank with, with many big sharks, you know, because kids are watching me and it's a bit boring. I'm floating for 20 minutes sleeping. In my mind, I'm like in a meditative state. I call it meditation underwater, but also to tell a story that sharks are not out to eat you, you know, I'm a marine biologist, I love animals, I love the ocean. So if I can do a record and also tell a story at the same time, it's much, much better for, for the whole record, not just that I do a record for myself, it has no meaning. 
So to inspire people, and also the record I just did in Mexico was in a national park. So to remind people, even though we have COVID and this strange world, we should not lose focus on the priorities of protecting nature, taking care of our bodies, staying healthy, staying happy and sane. Yeah. So you asked me what goes through my mind. I go to another place. Uh, I, I call it meditation underwater. You have to kind of enter flow, some of the same you do in your martial arts. When you get very absorbed in the moment, uh, you kind of become what you do. Uh, and obviously I'm holding my breath, so I don't have the movement of breath that we normally do. Um, but you can go into a state called alpha state. Mm -hmm. It's also called the flow state. And it's very good also if you're a business owner, entrepreneur, to be able to go into flow state because it's like a creative phase where you're not judging yourself. And, uh, and you are very aligned with your true self with your passion and with your calling in life. So like you're teaching people entrepreneurship and marketing and all this great stuff around the world and especially Portugal. My life mission is to teach breathing. So you asked me before, who am I? What do I do? So, well, maybe in short, my life mission is to inspire people and make the world breathe better one breath at a time. That's the tagline of our company. Yeah. So if I can so, make people more energetic and healthy, that's my mission. So let me pick that one. Uh, so what are the main benefits because people don't realize because people you know they breathe it's yeah. like an automatic thing you know <laughs> uh yeah. but but they don't use the the whole system and so what would be the main benefits that people get from you know better breathing yeah well you're very right this is the thing you know people go well i'm breathing i'm doing fine you know i did it for whatever you know i'm nearly 50 years old i'm an old guy so i did it for half a second oh by the way yeah you, you are the same age as me right 48 yeah for 48 next month yeah yes. so um you know but you can still stay healthy and strong and maybe even try to make a world record or something like that so to, to your question the main benefits are of course that every day people without realizing it breathe 20 to 30,000 times. I'll repeat that slowly, or you can say it in Portuguese, 20, 30, or whatever you say, mil, you know, the mil. Mil, mil basis, you know, it's, it's a lot of breathing. So people have to realize, imagine if you can make every breath count, if instead of <laughs> just breathing from your mouth or into your upper part of your lung and, and squeeze your heart and not get the, the, the maximum amount of oxygen, If you can breathe with your nose, smile, shh, exhale, you know, use the diaphragm down here in uh, really use the body as it's intended. Those 20 to 30,000 times of, of breathing can be improved. So everyone listening to your wonderful show are probably healthy. They're probably, you know, having a company or doing a lot of things. They need energy and you teach people energy, which is great but maybe they don't realize that the biggest amount of energy they get from breathing and, and to be specific from oxygen, oxygeno. So if you don't breathe optimally, obviously you're not your best self. You're not performing at your highest level. That means you don't have your most clear mind. You don't make the best decisions and you get tired more easily. So you don't have the power to push through, like to keep going. Like when you train martial arts, you have to keep going, have to keep pushing, kicking. So maybe the the biggest benefit is that you gain more energy and who wouldn't love to have more energy you know in the world you do all kinds of things you go to the gym you buy new tennis shoes you uh, buy supplements for thousands of dollars a month if you're into sports right but you don't think about the number one fuel it's right under your nose and it's free so the main benefit is is um, energy and then I would say also for people that are very stressed and have all these things in life like we all do especially now with COVID and lockdowns and social isolation and restrictions we have more stress so the number one way to become more resilient to stress to battle stress and to work around stress is through breathing simply for the reason that When we have stress, it's often in our mind. And then it shows in our body, we get a rash or bad skin, or we sleep bad at night, or we don't digest the food. We see a secondary bad effects. Maybe we get more irritated or we get more angry with people, uh, you know, short tempered. But that's simply because we're in pain. We're not functioning as a, as a gazella, you know, running on the savannah. We're not like the puma, wow, with all the power, like the lion. So with breathing, 
we have a tool to take control back in our lives. You know, we cannot control the world situation. We cannot control what, what politicians are doing. How many days is the lockdown? Do we need the vaccine or not? Are we going to get a vaccine passport? We don't control any of that. But we need to understand with breathing, we can take the control back. It's very hard to control the mind. I know you train mind control and mindfulness and, and it's a very beautiful art, but it is difficult. But breathing, anyone listening to your show can just start now. Breathe in with the nose with me. Make a small pause. There are four phases in breathing. So small pause is the second phase. And then exhale with your mouth and smile and say, ah. And then when you land the breathing, the exhale, you just stop for a second again. So that's the fourth phase, the final phase. And then you start again slowly, not like this. You start slowly and controlled. Like you're smelling a beautiful flower. That's how breathing should be done 30,000 times each day. And obviously you can say, but wait a minute, stick. You can't do that at night. No, you don't have awareness at night. You don't have the, the conscious breathing. But if you do this at day, in the morning, midday, before your lunch break, and you start to teach and train your nervous system, this will go into your night's sleep as well. So you will wake more rested. You will battle disease and fatigue. Even if you have an illness or maybe an accident, you know, a car accident or something, you fall down the stairs, you will recover faster. Why? simply because you're giving your body peace and you're in the rest and digest system. It's a part of the nervous system called parasympathetic. And when you breathe in the right way and trigger the vagus nerve, it runs here into your heart, into your lungs. You go into the, the building part of your, of your body, the, the, the rest and digest with serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin, feeling uh, loved, feeling safe. Whereas everyone knows the other system, right? The stress system, yeah. adrenaline, cortisol, breaking down your body, breaking down your, your brain, storing fat. So that's why people, when they're stressed, become a bit more fat and they want to eat chips and sugar and bad things because they want to store that energy. And um, with breathing, you can reverse that. So those are probably the main benefits, energy and the ability to, to conquer stress. Cool. So one of the people, sometimes people get confused about uh, in breathing. Should they breathe? only with their nose should they breathe in inhale with the nose and exhale with the mouth what should they do great question and very important question especially since we do this 20 30,000 times a day exactly so i have a simple rule and you can translate into portuguese to all our friends and brazilian maybe the nose is for breathing the mouth is for eating so maybe you can say it i, I will say it. okay nariz é para respirar a boca é para comer Yes. Yeah. So the nose is a filter and this is the small nose. For some people, it's bigger. For some, it's smaller. Um, but up here is the real nose and the real nose is the same size of your mouth. So yeah. up here, you have the inner nose and a lot of little cavities. And when the air comes in, it goes into the top of your nose and it gets the right temperature. It gets the right moisture. It filters out bacteria and viruses, and you also, in your sinuses, produce nitrogen oxide, nitrogeno oxidino. And that is antiviral, antifungal, and antibacterial. It's a miracle gas. And uh, uh, three researchers were given the Nobel Prize about 14 years ago for the discovery of nitrogen oxide in your sinuses that when you breathe with your nose, It comes into your lungs and what it does is besides killing bacteria and virus and fungus is that it so you, you, you have a, a stronger health and immune system and you don't get maybe so much lung infection, right? You're, you're, you're preventive in your breathing, but at the same time, you also have like the right, the right speed of air. So airflow control is very important. And then when that nitrogen oxide, small amount of gas comes into your lungs, it has a relaxing effect on your alveoli. So in your lungs, you have about 1 million little flowers. Let's just call it that. Yeah. And the, the air goes, they're called air sacs in Danish and, or, or in English. And inside of your lungs, that little air sac is, is uh, filled with little blood vessels. And the blood has to jump from the air in that sac into the bloodstream. And the, the CO2, the waste product, has to jump from your blood into your lungs and then you blow it out. And then the plants can do photosynthesis when the sun is shining and they can produce oxygen. 
So we have symbiosis. We live together in harmony, right? That right. is why we need the plants and especially the rainforest. So when you do that breathing with your nose, you get more oxygen into your bloodstream. So not only do you stay more healthy and like for you, your instance, you're an athlete. So for sports, you get more power, more stamina. But also, if you're working hard, you know, any performer, any uh, entrepreneur, they need long working hours at night, get up early, you know, get ahead of the, the pack, you know, be a leader. Um, so when you have nitrogen oxide in the air that you breathe, it opens the blood vessels. It's called a vasodilation, but it relaxes the blood tissue. That's all you need to know. And you get more oxygen into your bloodstream. And this can be measured scientifically. I'm not just guessing about this. And then also, like I said, you get the right temperature. If you are in a, like me, I'm in Dubai. It's very hot during the day. So you need to cool the air down. So this is a climate station. But if I go in the desert at night, it's very cold. So I need to heat the air. So And, and finally, it's a way to protect your moisture. Because if you breathe with your mouth, people can try. <sighs> and you can just put a mirror or glasses in front of your hand, you will see how much moisture is coming out with every breath. So you're losing that water, you're dehydrating during the day. And I could go on and on and on and on, but there are many health benefits of breathing with the nose. And with your mouth, it's very bad because what happens with the mouth, people can try it. Breathe in with your mouth, everyone now. You feel dry in your throat, try again. You feel dry, but you also see my chest and shoulders rising. <gasps> it's the wrong way. And this is what most or many people are doing. They're mouth breathers. So to your question, do not breathe with your mouth ever. You can breathe out. Exhalacion. Exhale. <sighs> it's okay. But inhale with the nose for the sake of God. Use the nose. And, when, and then what you'll about see my diaphragm. You'll see my diaphragm. Sorry for this uh, little erotic show here. <laughs> But when I use the nose, I'm using the nose now. You see my belly. Yeah. The chest is not moving. But now I take the mouth. You see my chest. So people can start to understand how much pressure you put on your heart and on your blood pressure. So the hypertension comes from mouth breathing. So I hope people start to realize these incredible health benefits to proper breathing. What about exhale? What about exhale? Uh, okay. Should so, they should I, they breathe out using the mouth or the nose? Mouth or nose. But the good thing about the mouth is then you have already used the air. You have taken the oxygen. The good thing about mouth is you have a tongue and you have lips. So you have great instruments to make a valve, make a small hole. Right? So if you breathe in like this, slight pause, and then use the, the tongue and you say, That's an exercise. Or, that with, I or, with, or, with, the, or with the lips. But I prefer the tongue. It's such a strong muscle and it's inside your mouth. Then you have, again, what? Air flow control. If you don't use anything, You, com you, you compress. If you do sport and you don't use the tongue or the mouth and you do weightlifting or running, you can almost see how, how, how weak my body is. But if you use your body and your nose and your breathing, you know, and weightlifting, you have the power because when you do exhale with the, with the, with the resistance, you have airflow control. And not only that, The partial pressure, I'll try to keep it simple. Sorry, Ricardo. The partial pressure, so the pressure of oxygen in your lungs goes up, you know, because you're pushing against pressure. You know, you get a bit red in your face. Right. So it means you push more oxygen into your bloodstream. So not only do you get the benefits from nose breathing, the right speed, the nitrogen oxide, this gas that opens the blood vessels, you also with physical push of the air, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but with the yeah, physical yeah, 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 push, you you're pushing the air, the oxygen into your bloodstream. So for sports, when you really need those last 5% for performance, for running, for speed, for power, this is the main difference of, of uh, win or lose. This is why I train goal-winning athletes in the world. I train some of the best athletes on the planet. 
I trained the, the Navy SEALs in Denmark and I trained the Royal Air Force. So these are some of the techniques when we go into the high performance range that I train. But people can use this, everyday people can use this to just stay more healthy, use it for the jogging, use it at the gym, coordinate the movement they're doing with breathing. So breathing is king. Always start with breathing. Don't start with the movement and then <laughs> breathing comes after. No, you start with a conscious decision, you breathe. So, so and, this, and the movement follows. So when you train, when you train, uh, you, you train meditation, right? And so when, when you are meditating, do you use inhale with, the, with your nose, exhale with your mouth or inhale yes. and exhale with the, with the, always with the nose? Both. You can do both. Now I was just showing the most simple way that people understand why the, the, nose, uh, the nose is to inhale and the mouth is so It's good for exhale. exhale. Yeah. Because it's actually a little bit more difficult for beginners to exhale with the nose. Why? because you don't have the same valve. You do have a valve that I will show you. It's very intimate, but I hope your audience is not too um, uh, sensitive. There, here's a valve. Right, yeah. It's not the tongue. It's the top of the roof yeah, of my it. mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you can control that, we do that in freediving because we want to push air to the ears and equalize the ears so we don't break the eardrum when we go and the water squeezes. But if you can do that, you can make a jai breathing, the, the warrior breath, because you see my tongue is out. Yeah. It's nothing to do with my tongue. I lift the soft palate, it's called. I lift it slightly and then so I can use my nose But most people cannot just do this naturally, ujjayi breathing, yoga breathing, so it's better to use the mouth. Just yeah. to give some really in detail cool, explanation. Cool. I love it. Because in, in yoga, I do a lot of inhale and exhale with the, with the, with the nose, and also inhale left, exhale with the right. Yes. So, Nadi yeah. Shodan, alternate nostril breathing. And then you actually, without maybe thinking about it, you're actually having the, the airflow control, right? right? So it takes double the time. Yeah. And one last thing we should tell people is when you do nose breathing or even the, the half nose, you know, the, the nostril breathing, then what happens is that you facilitate diaphragmatic breathing. So with the nose, you come into your belly with your mouth in your chest, very stressful with your nose. You have time to let the air go into the bottom of your lungs so when I say facilitates I mean it helps belly breathing yoga breathing deep lung breathing when you use the nose because the holes are so small that it takes longer to go into your lungs and in the bottom of the lungs is where you have these most of these alveoli you have the air sac so you have more gas exchange of oxygen going into your bloodstream and co2 coming back to your air in the bottom of your lungs that is why you want to breathe with your belly You, you call awesome. it belly breathing, but you know, we're not using the belly. We're using the lower part of the lungs and that grows and the belly is pushed out. So when you see my belly coming out, I don't breathe into my stomach, my belly. I don't breathe with my esophagus. I breathe with my windpipe into my lungs, but the belly is pushed out. Just so we are very correct on your show here. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And, uh, and um, I remember that one of the exercises that we did together in the swimming pool Uh, was uh, I was laying down on the floor and you you push you were pushing my you know the thorax uh, you were yeah. pushing down and like breathing and I noticed when you took you when you took out your hands I was like wow so much air yeah like a balloon <laughs> like a balloon but but, so, but that is a bit more of a, an advanced exercise yeah, I know, it, goes, I know. it goes to show that you can even if you're in good shape and you know a lot about sports you can still improve your flexibility and you can still improve the, the awareness of breathing and the expansion of your chest. And maybe a very important thing to put here in your show for everyone listening or, or watching um, is that you can actually increase your lung volume, your visceral capacity. And if you look in a doctor's book or medical book, it says you cannot, you know, I have a PhD in medicine. I've read all these books, but don't believe in all that old fashioned stuff. You can simply just breathe 
train, get more flexible, get to use your diaphragm optimally, and then you can measure before and after. Okay, you know, so you see for yourself, you can get bigger lungs. So that's okay. That's a good point that I wanted to 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 see because you you, you spoke in the beginning about biohacking and and that's an, an example of biohacking. You know, the doctors say that you can't, and then we show we can't. I remember in the eighties. Uh, the doctor used to say to me, like, no, it's impossible to control your heart. And I was controlling my heart yeah, and showing yeah, the yeah. thing. So right now they believe it. So now now it's, it's you know, science as explained. Yeah. Um, but um, what what other kinds of... Do you believe that, like, for example, is it is it possible to optimize the body? Like, for example, uh, I have glaucoma. I have glaucoma, and, and you know that glaucoma is about um, is the otic nerve that gets uh, damaged. So I have in my right eye, I have the, around 50% of the nerve otic is damaged. But I believe that I can optimize the 50% in a way that, can, that I can see the same as the 100% of the, the, the rest of the people. Uh, what do you think about this kind of situation? You think you can we can biohack in a way that we are, can optimize the body in a way that you know it's becoming normal to other people? I certainly think so, and I think that's a big trend now with Ben, Gren ben Greenfield and all these famous biohackers. I think you've been biohacking, and I've been biohacking for a century or for decades. We just called it something else. We called it training, basically, right? Trial and error. <laughs> Um, so, but, but I, I will say, I, 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 my brother happens to be a fine ophthalmologist. He's an eye surgeon. Uh, so um, I believe that you can do many things, but of course, some things you cannot correct 100% or something you cannot, you know, repair. But I certainly do believe that a lot in our body is way beyond what medic, medics or doctors think you can repair, whether it's lung volume whether it's a damaged nervous system, whether it's an optic nerve, or you maybe had a brain injury, a brain cancer, or some other issue. You know, I trained a friend who had Lyme disease. It's a very common disease now around the world. And the doctor said he was never going to walk again. So we retrained his nervous system. It's actually in my book for anyone interested. I, I explain exactly what I did step by step. And uh, we can always put a link in the end of your video here, yeah. but, but Breathology has it on the front page and you get the free uh, uh, breath training in Corona crisis as well. The, bo the book is also in Portuguese, so maybe you should explain awesome. to the listeners. Awesome, awesome. We can, yeah, we yeah. can book the link below and, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's free. I gave it for free when the world was having Corona crisis in March in 2020. I thought the best I can do is give my book to the whole world and now we're soon half a million downloads. And I created an online program also in English about breath training in Corona crisis because the health authorities weren't doing anything. Politicians weren't doing any, anything. And certainly the WHO, the World Health Organization, they were not doing anything. How to tell people in simple ways to stay healthy, to get sun, sunlight, to be social, to stay healthy, to do five, 10 minutes of workout every day, to have your blood system trained, to have your lymphatic system trained. All those basic things we know as athletes, but none of that was conveyed. No advice was given. They just say, stay at home, stay in quarantine. But they should have said, now you're at home, make sure you walk every day around the house. Make sure you tell your grandmother to go up the stairs three times. You know, you, she needs to work the heart. She needs to work the cardiovascular system. It needs to stay flexible because if it's not flexible, you can have stroke and, and it's very dangerous, especially for elder people. So they failed, so I thought I'd give my book for free and a video course, so, and I still have that today on the website. So you can put a link later, Ricardo, but it's in Portuguese also. So uh, we are running almost uh, until the end, and what, what other you know, hacks could you give, a uh, very, very small technique that the entrepreneurs could use for their, you know, before taking the decision, before um, having a meeting, before, you know, uh, yeah, offer before. You know. I will give I will give two quick hacks or tips because I know we are kind of coming to the end here. One would be what I call one-two breathing. I'm very much about relaxation. Everything for me starts with relaxation. Even before breath work, you should do relaxation because we can all stress and we are too stressed in this world, but we're not taught relaxation. So when you can hold your breath for a long time, it's because you're good to relax. It sounds strange, but it's direct measure when you can relax a lot and go in a special place in your mind, you can hold your breath for, let's like I do 20 minutes or 10 minutes, five minutes, and you can measure it yourself at home. 
So when you do slow breathing before a meeting with the nose, slight pause, and then slow exhale, double the time. I call it one-two ratio breathing. So you inhale for five seconds or four, slight pause, but then the exhale must be very slow. And that's why it's easy to do it with the tongue when you're not a yoga expert. So you go, and you land softly and you have a pause again, one second, two seconds. That was about eight second or 10 second exhale, right? The double. If you do that three to five times, it takes half a minute before a meeting, before going into a boardroom, before calling a, you know, for a sales call or for a management role or anything, you're more centered, you're more calm, you have more oxygen in your bloodstream and in your brain, giving you better decision making. So that is certainly a biohack. The other thing I would advise, especially entrepreneurs, because we have so much information all the time, is to start to look into breath holding. Also on our website, we have a completely free seven days breath hold challenge. And what we see many people they do in seven days, they double or triple the breath hold. So why should you hold your breath? Of course, never do it alone in water. But when you do it on land, you learn to control your fears. You learn to control your urge to breathe. And basically you get more resistant to high levels of CO2 carbon dioxide. And when you control, when you can control the urge to breathe, which is the strongest urge in all the universe, then you can control so many other things, you know, the stock market going down, your sales uh, assistant getting sick one day, all these things are nothing to you. You're like, yeah, okay, it's, it's a bad thing today, but I'll fix it. So I'll, I'll suggest people to start looking into breath holding. And then you and I can speak more because I know you have many, many thousand entrepreneurs following you, but we're soon releasing a program called Breathing Business. So it's a breathology business program that we've worked on for several years and it's actually also inspired by one of your friends uh, from Brazil, who's a big entrepreneur. Uh, and uh, he, he said, if you ever make this program, I think I was even with you at uh, Jeff Walker's Mastermind. He said, if you ever release this program, I'll be the first to buy it. So I've tried to make a program that speaks directly to the business owner or the entrepreneur. So they don't have to go through our whole training with fundamentals and advanced that we use for you know elite, elite athletes and military you can go straight to a breathing business program. So you and I can talk about how people can yeah. maybe get access to that. Yeah, that's, uh, but, but that's, that's secondary. Yeah, that's that's yeah. really important. What about, before before we, we finish, what about, yeah. because uh, I think people have not realized, you, you also did uh, something, I don't know if it was North Pole or South, I think it was North yeah, Pole. Yeah, it was Greenland. I, I have uh, several Guinness World Records diving under ice, so maybe you can share that link with all your Yeah, followers. I will, and I'll, I will put some, some image yeah. here also as we as we speak. With yeah. the I still have those records, nobody was stupid enough to break them yet, so I, I dive under ice in Speedos, so that people have probably seen it on History Channel or Discovery yeah, Channel. Yeah, and so, uh, because you know people okay breathing they understand but you know facing the cold facing the the minus i don't know yeah 20, but again 25. but again again like the diver just did the guinness world record in the ocean the longest dive ever performed in open water and the diving under ice it's obvious for people that it's like a struggle it's hard it's like life and death but for me, it's my sport, it's my passion. I train a lot for this and I want to be very elegant. People can decide when they see it. I try to be like a ballerina, very soft, very gracious. It's my fight, you know, it's my inner fight. So I want it to be beautiful. And it's just a metaphor for any struggle in life. You know, when you start a business, when you have a family, when you try to get kids, when you travel around the world, but you have travel restrictions, all that happens to all of us in different ways. So with my dives, I just hope to have a storytelling behind it, you know? Yeah. People can see I'm holding my breath. It's kind of tough, but there's light at the end of the tunnel. Literally, we all will get through. And that's also why holding your breath and learning to do that is a great thing in your everyday life, because metaphorically, you can tell yourself, I'm going to hold my breath a little bit longer, meaning I'm going to do this. I'm going to keep going a little bit more and then I'll be victorious in the end. So yeah. it's, it's just to inspire people i do it i don't want people to dive under the ice i don't no. want them to go to greenland because the question is to... <laughs> because the question is do you get cold <laughs> of course i get cold but i just lean into it you know we all get uncomfortable situations in life one of the main skills i teach people whether they're military or pilots or athletes or bankers business owners entrepreneurs is to become comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. There's yeah. no better master yeah. or breath trainer than holding your breath. 
because for anyone, me, Navy SEALs in the, in the military of the USA, I trained the SEAL Team 6, I trained the best elite soldiers. They have a breaking point. We all need to breathe at some point. So no matter how tough you are, how much you think you're so fit, at some point you need to breathe. And this is great to have this humility and learn that we're not Superman, we cannot do anything in life, but we need to push gently and then learn in this uncomfortable, stressful situation to make the best decision, to make the best sales call, to make the best product, to make the best launch, even though everything is breaking up around us, everything's on fire. So it's a way to train people to manage life better. That's that's what I'm trying to do at least. That's awesome. That's all. and that's the great message to finish. So we're gonna put the link below. Uh, we're gonna pick, uh, put the link below. And uh, you want to say a final message? Final message would be that I'm very excited beyond uh, the the opportunities in the world right now. Everything is being speeded up. Like you know, you have an incredible successful platform. Uh, you have different companies because we're going more online so we can look at the bad things of corona or say wow, wow what a gift we got catapulted into the future five years faster and i would maybe share besides of the business breathing that i'm so excited to help people with because they're going to have healthier staff right they have they're better and more happy employees it's going to save money and and uh, you know save the day in the end but i'm also excited because for me we also have this you know breathology instructor course so we train instructors, you know, we have done that for the last many years, but now in the 28th of February, so about a few weeks from now, we will do the first all virtual instructor training. So for the first time in our history in the company of breathology, it will be all virtual. What does it mean? It means the price is much lower, about half the price of the original price. It means that people can join from everywhere in the world because they don't have to travel and go away from their family and their jobs, and they can save the money for the travel in the hotel as well. So as much as I love to touch people and like you, we like to train, we're physical, we like to sweat, we like to guide people and touch them and help them. Now is a great opportunity to be all virtual. And then of course, when people get instructors in our company, they also get business partners so they can help make their own business at home. So I'm excited about the new virtual reality of, of things. And uh, I couldn't be more excited about the next instructor course. We actually do already have one or two from Portugal from last time. Awesome. from uh, Lisboa yeah so we hope to get more Portuguese people maybe also more uh, Brazilian I don't know if you have audience in Brazil but uh, we hope to get also Brazilians awesome so thank you very much Stig and thank you for this opportunity and guys let me go for Portuguese right now <laughs> olá pessoal bom uh, espero terem gostado um, estamos aqui o link em baixo o link está aqui em baixo uh, basta ou aqui em cima depende da rede e vão lá façam o download do, do livro do, do Stig que uh, vão ver que é uma, é uma nova dimensão, é uma nova forma de olhar para, para a respiração e como o Sigo disse, a respiração é aquilo que nós fazemos, mas temos que fazer melhor para tomar melhores decisões, sermos melhores empreendedores, melhores amigos, enfim, tudo, tudo melhor vem sobretudo da, da essência da vida que é respirar. Por isso, um grande abraço, cheio de força, cheio de dia e acima de tudo, com muito aqui. Tchau! <música>